It's the music, the culture, the food, and most importantly, the people. Tonight on Perspectives, we recognize Caribbean American Heritage Month. Take a look at Caribbean heritage, the accomplishment of the Caribbean Americans. That's tonight on Perspectives with yours truly, Darren Jaime. Bring it to the table, whether you're making moves solo or a movement with a stable. No fables, just speak on your decisions, because in the long run, it's your voice, your views, your vision. Keeping it real with many messages for you to know. This ain't radio, but DJ runs the show. Entertainment, he rocks it. Politics, he locks it. The host with the most would handle any topic. Don't forget to share your perspective, which shines a light, because it might make a difference in someone else's life. Make a difference. What's your perspective? Express what's in your heart and your and hello again and welcome to another edition of Perspectives. I'm Darren Jaime. It's been five years since the resolution was unanimously adopted, recognizing the significance of Caribbean people and their descendants in the history and culture of the United States. Joining me now to give us an in-depth look on the past and present of the Caribbean Americans in the Bronx First off is Bronx Borough historian Lloyd Altan. And uh, good to have you, Lloyd. Wow, it's nice to be here, always. Glad to have you sharing with us. And we know that you are the Bronx Borough historian, and you know uh, just about everything here in the borough. Yes, we oh, do. Oh, never say that. Yeah, well, we, we, we pretty much, that's why you're here. But tell us a little bit about the contributions of Caribbean Americans in the Bronx. How, how far back do we go? Actually, the... Uh, the Caribbean Americans uh, started coming into the Bronx in around 1670. And the first place they came from was Barbados. Now, in those days, of course, slavery was legal, and they were slaves. Uh, the Morris family of Morrisania uh, had a uh, uh, sugar plantation in Barbados. They bought land in what is now the Bronx, and they brought some of their slaves with them. Uh, never more than 30 at any particular date. but. Um, uh, the foundation was, uh, you know, people from Barbados. Um, and um, a number of them were very accomplished. They were, uh, they were people who had skills, uh, such as people who made barrels and things like that. Uh, other people were, you know, helped in the, um, in, in, in the house, and other people helped on the farm. The interesting thing is that the relationship between the, uh, the, the family and the slaves was not antagonistic. There is absolutely no record of any slave ever running away from the Morris family. Wow. Um, now, when you, uh, when you go on, uh, if you're talking about uh, English-speaking uh, people from the Caribbean, uh, and you're talking about the, their contributions to the Bronx, uh, if the large numbers started coming in uh, in the 1940s, uh, mostly from Jamaica, and indeed the very first uh, black person in the Bronx to hold elected office was a fellow by the name of Walter H. Gladwin, who was elected to the New York State Legislature in 1953, and uh, he later was appointed as a uh, Supreme Court judge, and so he was again the first black person from the Bronx to be a judge of the Supreme Court, and he, uh, his origin was Caribbean. Uh, also coming in at that particular time in the, uh, in the 1940s uh, was a family, uh, again, whose roots were in Jamaica. They had moved to Harlem uh, and then moved into, uh, into the Bronx. And there was a young guy who grew up on Kelly Street uh, who uh, went to Morris High School. He was a member of the track team. Um, later uh, went to City College and uh, uh, joined the ROTC and got into a military career. Uh, I don't know if you heard of him. His name was Colin Powell. There you go. And, uh, of course, he later became the uh, Secretary of State uh, of the United States. And uh, if you're talking about cultural contributions... Um, Which uh, there are a lot of cultural there contributions. There are a lot of contributions, but there's one that has you know, swept the country and is sweeping the world, started right here uh, in the Bronx, uh, there was a fellow by the name of uh, Clive Campbell, uh, who, again, was from Jamaica. Um, he was a sort of, uh, you know, rowdy young kid. Uh, he was one of those graffiti artists uh, that, that uh, uh, put all of the, uh, the color on the subway in the 1970s and so on. Um, and, of course, he had his own tag. But he also um, uh, started uh, working as a disc jockey, a DJ. And uh, his sister... 
uh, through a party in her ap apartment house. They had a basement room uh, there to hold a party. And uh, he was the DJ. And uh, he had a method of, uh, of two, um, two records on a turntable mm -hmm. uh, that he was able to manipulate back and forth in such a way that at the time of the break, uh, when, the, uh, when the vocals stopped and the music uh, sort of spanned a, an area, he was able to expand it and then spontaneously rhyme mm -hmm. words. And that was in 1973. The place was uh, 1520 Sedgwick Avenue, a building that still stands just north of the Washington Bridge. And that is the birth of rap or hip hop. And uh, there were many people who heard about him, who came to hear him, who imitated him. And that is how uh, the hip hop movement started and it has swept the world. And it started from a person who was an immigrant from the Caribbean in the Bronx. Talk to us about the fact of where we are today, uh, knowing where people have come from, the history of Caribbean Americans, but where we are today, what are some of the more popular things that we ought to be knowing today? Well, of course, one of the things that uh, has always uh, marked uh, any immigrant group coming in is the cuisine. Um, you know, we, we, uh, you know we, we started out, of course, you know, like, the, you know, boiled beef, you know, from England. You know, and then of course, uh, you know, you 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 had the, the Irish adding theirs, and the uh, uh, the Italians and the Germans and the Jews, and you know, all of the groups coming mm -hmm. in. Well, of course, you have um, uh, the, the Caribbean Americans coming in are extremely entrepreneurial. A number of them have opened up uh, restaurants, and of course, the Jamaica meat patties, of mm -hmm. course, have become a staple. And of course, it has uh, it has gone beyond the ethnic food of the group. Uh, to become, uh, you know, something beyond that, and that is uh, that that is sort of an, a, an example of a group that has made it. Mm -hmm. When you talk about food, I think food is one of the things that that people will talk about with the Caribbean culture mm -hmm. uh, and the footprint that's been here in the mm -hmm. Bronx. But talk about the fact of uh, when it talks about recognition, because you're a historian and obviously mm -hmm. you know a lot. But when it turn when it comes to in terms of recognition, I talked in the uh, initial stages about how the president. Uh, made sure of this legislation coming forward. But it's been a hard push to really get Caribbean Americans and, and the Caribbean community to be recognized. Uh, in, in, in some ways, one of the reasons is that uh, culturally, mm -hmm. uh, the people of the Caribbean are, uh, in, in a sense, divided. You have Spanish speakers, you have English speakers. Um, and so when, um, when they come in, you know, Puerto Ricans come in, they're Puerto Rican. Dominicans come in, they're Dominicans. Jamaicans come in, they're Jamaicans. Antiguans come in, they're Antiguan. Um, then you have to ask, well, what makes them Caribbean? And, uh, of course, the place where they come from, all those islands, uh, is, you know, is part of it. And uh, it takes some time uh, from among the various subgroups to have themselves conscious conscious of the fact that they do have something in common, mm -hmm. uh, that they are Caribbean. And then to, um, to make that uh, consciousness effective on the political level where uh, politicians will sit up and take notice and say, hey, you know, we're, you know, these people are not you know, that divided. They do have something in common and we ought to recognize it. And that is part of the recognition factor.